Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of Max DeVries? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, then offer my analysis. Max DeVries was born on April 18, 1990, and was raised in Brighton, Michigan. He lived with his mother, Yvonne, his father, George, and his sister, Dominique. George had a good job. He was a strategic assets manager for Dunkin' Donuts. The family was well off financially. They even had a sailboat. On November 10, 2002, George suddenly died from cardiac arrest, which sent his family into a tailspin. In May of 2004, as the family was still recovering from their tremendous loss, they went on a vacation to Aruba. George's sister-in-law accompanied the family to help take care of 14-year-old Max and his 12-year-old sister, Dominique. The family stayed at the La Cabana Resort, where they met a man named David while playing pool. He was about 37 years old and in Aruba with his adoptive father, who was about 55 years old. The father was also named David. I will refer to these two men as David Sr. and David Jr. The men said that they were celebrating the anniversary of the adoption. They asked Yvonne about plans that the family had for the next day. When she indicated how they wanted to go parasailing, the men expressed an interest in joining them. The next day, they met at the boat and went parasailing. Later, David Jr. wanted to go jet skiing so the group did that as well. After they returned, they all went to dinner. On May 12, 2004, David Sr. arrived at the pool alone, where the family was, and asked if Max wanted to go jet skiing. Yvonne explained to him how Max had been jet skiing the day before, so she wasn't going to let him go. David Sr. explained how he was going to pay the rental fee. Max said that he wanted to go, so his mother gave in and granted him permission. David Sr. and Max departed from the jet ski rental location at 1.45 p.m. They were each riding a Yamaha Wave Runner. The activity should have taken about 45 minutes. Over an hour later, they still had not returned. Yvonne went down to the beach where the jet ski rental location was and saw a man looking at the water with binoculars. He was searching for David Sr. and Max. Not long after this, a boat arrived carrying David Sr. Max was not in the boat with him. Yvonne spoke to David Sr. about what happened. According to her, he said that they went to a sandbar a few miles away. After they arrived, they turned off the jet skis and dismounted. After climbing back on the jet skis, they were unable to start them. David Sr. heard a thump and saw Max floating away in the water. He did not attempt to swim to Max. Yvonne noticed that David Sr. had scratches on his neck and on the backs of his hands. The authorities in Aruba launched a massive search effort, but they did not have any success. David Sr. gave a statement to the authorities, which differed a little bit from what he told Yvonne. Here is what he indicated during a statement on May 12. He and Max rented two Wave Runner jet skis. About 10 minutes into the trip, Max stopped his jet ski and jumped into the water. When he climbed back on, he started the jet ski, but then it stalled. The machine would not respond after this. Max could not get it started. They tied the jet skis together so that the functional jet ski could pull the one that was disabled, but they were unable to make good progress. They remained seated on the jet skis for about an hour. This was difficult to do because the waves were pounding into them. Eventually, they decided to float on the water while holding a rope tied to the jet skis. Max started swimming toward the shore, even though they had not agreed on any type of plan. David Sr. remained with the jet skis. He could see that Max was drifting in the direction of the big hotels. Max was not swimming, but floating in his life jacket. David Sr. tried to swim to Max, but was unsuccessful. Based on this account, it sounds like Max decided to swim toward the shore and must have drowned before he made it. On May 15, 2004, the search for Max was abandoned. The authorities declared that he was lost at sea. That same day, 
David Sr. provided another statement to the authorities in Aruba. Here is what he said this time. When they were stuck out in the water, Max was sitting on his jet ski, which had capsized. At some point, David Sr. noticed that Max was no longer sitting there. He could not find him. He called out to Max, but there was no answer. After this, he saw Max in the water. Max was doing nothing but floating. David Sr. tried to swim to him, but was not successful. Max was simply floating calmly in the water. He was drifting away, not trying to swim. David Sr. lost sight of Max after 20 minutes. After being out there for about an hour, David Sr. was rescued. The scrapes that he had were obtained while trying to climb onto the jet ski. The second statement creates an inconsistency. In the first statement, David Sr. said that he could see Max swimming away, but in the second statement, Max drifted away. Despite this discrepancy, the authorities in Aruba were satisfied that the death of Max was accidental. On May 18, 2004, Yvonne and her remaining family members flew home. After arriving in Michigan, Yvonne contacted various people looking for help. She wanted her son's death to be properly investigated. In August of 2005, she contacted a detective at the Livonia Police Department named Corey Williams. Corey discovered that David Sr. had been arrested in 1981 for an alleged crime against 14-year-old David Jr. The crime involved some type of touching, which was inappropriate. Corey was unable to find a disposition for the case. He contacted the FBI, who started an investigation into the disappearance of Max. They interviewed David Jr., but he denied any wrongdoing. They asked him if he would agree to a so-called lie detector test. David Jr. agreed to participate, but then failed to show up at the scheduled time. The FBI gave up on its investigation after the agent working on the case was reassigned. In April of 2016, a woman who claimed that she had dated David Jr. for a year contacted Yvonne. The woman said that David Sr. spoke to her about a person named Max. When she asked David Jr. who Max was, he told her to never mention the name again. The woman also said that David Sr. had a desire to get close to her son. She felt as though he wanted to get too close. At some point, a second woman came forward who also claimed that she had dated David Jr. This woman said that he told her that David Sr. helped get him out of trouble in Aruba. On one occasion when David Jr. was sleeping, he was yelling the name Max. When the woman asked who Max was, David Jr. allegedly attacked her. He was arrested for a variety of serious charges, but ultimately the case against him disintegrated. According to Yvonne, David Jr. received two years of probation. At the time making this video, David Sr. and David Jr. have not been charged with any crime related to the disappearance of Max DeVries, and there does not appear to be any active investigation. Now moving to my analysis. Yvonne and the police detective, Corey, believe that David Sr. and David Jr. may have been involved in the disappearance of Max DeVries. Corey has stated that he thinks the federal government should indict the men. This brings me to the question, were David Sr. and David Jr. responsible for any type of wrongdoing related to this case? Let's take a look at the evidence both for and against the idea that the men were involved in wrongdoing, starting with the inculpatory factors. David Sr. was arrested in 1981 for allegedly committing an offense against 14-year-old David Jr. Max was 14 when he disappeared. The story that David Sr. and David Jr. offered about being in Aruba to celebrate an adoption anniversary seems peculiar. That event is usually not celebrated like a wedding anniversary or a birthday would be. The two men met the DeVries family under suspicious circumstances. Why did they make contact with the family in the first place? Why would a 55-year-old and a 37-year-old want to spend time with a 14-year-old? After parasailing and jet skiing with the family, why did David Sr. come back the next day and specifically request to go jet skiing with Max? It was almost like he wanted to spend time with Max alone. He was even willing to pay for the jet skis. The story offered by David Sr. about how Max disappeared doesn't make a lot of sense. For example, why would Max climb off his jet ski in the open water? 
Why did the jet ski fail to start after Max climbed back on? David Sr. allegedly told Yvonne that both jet skis failed to start, but in his statements to the authorities, it's clear that his jet ski was still functional. Given that his jet ski was working, why didn't David Sr. simply return to the beach and request assistance for Max? They were out there in the open water for over an hour, yet it never occurred to David Sr. to simply go get help? In his first statement to the authorities, David Sr. said that he saw Max swimming away, but in the second statement, Max was drifting away. Why did David Sr. tell two different stories? If Max was wearing a life jacket, how come his body was never recovered? If the authorities found David Sr., why didn't they find Max? How far apart could they have been at the time of the rescue? It wasn't like they were out there for days drifting apart. Nowhere in the story offered by David Sr. is there any explanation for why Max disappeared. After David Sr. was rescued, Yvonne noticed that he had scratches on his neck and on the backs of his hands. He explained the scratches to the authorities by saying they were obtained as he was trying to climb back on the jet skis. I guess he was using the uncommon neck and back of hands method of climbing on a jet ski. During the time when both David Sr. and Max were missing, the authorities knocked on the hotel room where David Jr. was staying. He never answered the door. When David Sr. was brought to the beach in the boat, David Jr. showed up and said that he didn't hear any knocking in his hotel room. It seems more likely that he wasn't actually in the hotel room. In his statement to the authorities, David Jr. said that his father had never been arrested, but of course that was not true. Several years after Max disappeared, David Jr. was arrested in connection with attacking a woman. This woman and another former lover offered stories that portray David Jr. as being highly sensitive about the disappearance of Max DeVries. Moving to the exculpatory factors, the authorities in Aruba investigated and concluded that Max was lost at sea. The FBI discontinued its investigation as well. If they thought there was a good case to be made, they would have continued investigating. Operating a jet ski can be dangerous. Maybe Max hit his head, became disoriented, and fell into the water. It's possible that David Sr. did not use the functional jet ski to get help because he didn't want to abandon Max. David Sr. and David Jr. did not have a lot of time to perpetrate any type of crime. In such a short time, how would they have disposed of Max in such a way that his body would never be discovered? As far as the stories about how David Jr. reacted strongly to any mention of the name Max, maybe he was simply upset by what happened. This doesn't mean that David Jr. was involved in any way. When considering all the evidence, do I think that David Sr. and David Jr. were involved in the disappearance of Max? In my opinion, it is reasonable to believe that they were, but there is definitely no way to prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Max could have simply died by accident. Unfortunately, the authorities in Aruba did not conduct a proper investigation. For example, they did not test David Sr. for DNA. There is no mention of whether the jet skis were ever recovered. Was the one operated by Max actually defective, or did it start? Was there surveillance video from the hotel available? If David Jr. was with his adoptive father and Max, how did he get there? Were witnesses interviewed? Did anyone see anything suspicious? The authorities in Aruba missed their chance to solve this case. I think what happened here is they just wanted to get the disappearance of Max behind them. Aruba is dependent on tourism, especially from the United States. It doesn't look good if Americans die while on vacation. If Americans disappear, tourism disappears as well. There is no way to know what happened in the case of Max DeVries, and that's probably exactly how the authorities in Aruba want it. Forever remaining a mystery is a better outcome for them than revealing the truth. Those are my thoughts on the case of Max DeVries. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.